Hello, my hellish friends, it's Silent Signs from I Dream of Indie, and today we are taking a look at Hell Pie from developer Sluggerfly and publisher Head Up. It is a very fitting 96 degrees as I record this review, and that feels right. It's about to get hot in here, so don't take off all your clothes. What are you doing? Unless you're at home, then it's fine. Hell Pie is a 3D platformer that clearly draws inspiration from some of my favorite mascot platformers, but with a twist, mainly being that you're in hell and are in fact a demon. Here you'll play as Nate, the demon of bad taste, also known as the eighth deadly sin. That's right, I see your socks and sandals. I won't judge you, but Nate certainly will. So do with that information what you will, but Nate might be a little bit preoccupied at the moment because it's Satan's birthday and it's time to make his birthday pie, but we don't have the ingredients. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like the recipe for an adventure. And that's exactly what this game is cooking up for you. From Hell's corporate headquarters, which is a maze in and of itself, off you go to discover the various locations where you can acquire these disgusting ingredients. Since misery loves company, you do get to bring a friend, well, pet, you get to bring a cherub on a chain, which serves as both your grappling hook and your companion. This cherub named Nugget also serves you well in combat and is a pretty effective weapon against the various beasties that you'll encounter. I probably should have prefaced this entire review with a warning, but if you've made it this far, you can probably already tell this game is quite lewd, pretty dark, and certainly on the blasphemous side. I personally enjoyed its brand of humor. I found it most effective. I also like games like Binding of Isaac though, so if that's up your alley, this may be as well. At least thematically. There is pee pee and poo poo humor galore. With that very obvious statement made, let's move on to how Hell Pie plays. This is, at its very core, a 3D platformer and plays quite fluidly. You will feel right at home playing as Nate if you are a fan of the early mascot platformers like Spyro the Dragon, particularly the open world elements of that title where you are wandering around using newfound abilities to gather gems and collectibles and discovering new areas. I know it feels wrong to compare this game to Spyro the Dragon, which is like a pure, innocent core memory of mine, but it also feels so right because I jumped right into this gameplay and it felt fantastic. You have your kind of basic jump and double jump, you have a grappling ability, as I mentioned before, using Nugget, and you can actually level up Nugget as you progress, so you collect these cans of cherub food, kind of like dog food, but for angels, I guess. You're also equipped with a wall climb ability as well as a dash, and a lot of these moves can be used in combination with one another in order to more successfully navigate your environment. Leveling up your angel on a chain is not your only way to gain new abilities. Nate can also level up his skills by collecting different types of horns. Some of these horns, which you acquire by sacrificing tiny adorable creatures by literally ripping a horn off of their head, will grant you powers like a burst of speed or the ability to see in the dark. Was it upsetting to rip the horns off of tiny adorable creatures? Yeah. Did I feel bad about it? Also yeah, but was it worth it? Absolutely. I will caution you that Hell Pie is a collectathon of sorts. There is a lot of platforming involved in the collecting of items, but at the end of the day, you're either collecting currency or various collectibles, such as Lucky Cats, which you can use to unlock new locations at Hell Headquarters, the Unicorn Critters to unlock new horns, the cans of food to unlock new abilities for Nugget, and of course the actual ingredients for Satan's pie, which is the whole point of the story after all. And I know what you're thinking right now, Silent Signs, what do you use the currency for? Excellent question, because you my friend, or buying new horrific outfits for both yourself and for Nugget, and they are every bit as dreadful as you would imagine. 
furry outfit anyone? Or perhaps a BDSM toilet paper combo is more your speed, I won't judge. There is some combat, there are enemies that lurk throughout these levels, and ultimately you will face off in a few different boss battles, but that doesn't feel like the primary focus of this title. There is a little bit of puzzle solving sprinkled in for good measure, as many platformers do, and you have a fair amount of free range of exploration. I will say one thing that I really appreciate about this game is that there's not one correct way to succeed in a level. Yes, there's probably a preferred method, but depending on how you have leveled up Nate and Nugget, it might be possible to accomplish the same thing in a variety of different ways. Perhaps you prefer using the grapple hook more than once to accomplish a long jump. Perhaps you use your horn abilities to accomplish that same jump with a burst of speed. It's really up to you and where your comfort lies. This is also a good time to express the sheer joy that comes along with exploring these environments. Are they grotesque and absolutely disturbing and lewd on every level? Yes, but that's what made it so fun to explore. Everything is so interactive. For example, you can press the button on the copy machine and out flies a bunch of printed pictures of dicks because that is what hell would be like. I think they nailed it. They fully embraced this theme of sin in the most outrageous fashion that just made it so much fun to explore because you're just wondering what lies behind that door? What is the next level going to hold? There are four explorable worlds in all, all of which have a bunch of different collectibles. There are bosses, there are puzzles, and they are all equally absurd, but perhaps all in different ways. As a person who went to Catholic school as a young child and was so accustomed to being told that I was going to hell on a daily basis, I felt right at home in this environment. The backgrounds are super detailed it's all so interactive and it's bright and colorful and inviting that does feel like a weird way to talk about a world that is inhabited by literal walking talking pieces of shit but it's the truth now i will say it is not a perfect game or at least not at the time that i was playing it unfortunately i did run into a few bugs here and there and i don't just mean the ones that were coming at you with tasers i mean the kind that would prevent you from picking up a gem because it was kind of of molding into the floor. There were also some moments where my character would glide across the floor instead of walking or get stuck in what almost looked like a first person perspective. Little things here and there that did kind of add up in my mind but didn't deter me from wanting to continue to play the game. I have also heard that a patch has been released after I did the gameplay for this review so it's possible that these problems will no longer be an issue when you play the game but nevertheless I can only review what I've played and I did find that to be worth mentioning. As far as settings and options go, there are a fair amount of visual settings as far as graphics. There are also some colorblind options. And if you are particularly sensitive to the image of cartoony penises, there is also a streamer mode where you can put it on safe or ultra safe and censor out those phallic objects. I know this all sounds very silly to say out loud in a review, but it is really nice that the option is there. Music and sound effects also also offer a delectable spread. There are a very wide variety of tracks in this game. You're going to hear everything from rock music to elevator music to whatever the hell is playing in the fine dining restaurant that is almost, I think, French, but they're basically just spouting out every French word that anyone with a brain cell will recognize, like baguette and croissant. It's so stupid, and I loved it. There's not really any voice acting. You get various mumbling from the different types of creatures and the occasional shouts of, you know, pure pain and torture since we are in hell. Really helps set the mood and uh, yeah, not a bad thing to say about how the game looks or sounds, everything really commits to the theme of sin and hell and demons and I ate it up. Honestly, I really liked this game despite its flaws and there were some. It's a lot of fun to play, like a lot. Hell Pie is a game for folks who grew up playing 3D mascot platformers like Spyro the Dragon, but their uh, humor stopped maturing around the age of 12 to 14 
That person is me, apparently, because I loved every second of this game. I honestly thought it was, dare I say, fire. I regretted that the second it came out of my mouth. I did wrestle with myself a little bit because I found this game to be obviously very fun, um, but I've played some lewd titles that are strictly on the lewd side that I kind of just rolled my eyes at, and I had to ask myself why that is. Why is this fun and humorous to me and those games are not? And I think it comes down to the fact that this is truly a well-made game that just fully leans into its sense of humor rather than a shell of a game for the sake of being a lewd. And to me, that is what sets Hell Pie apart. It's first fun to play and second fun to consume because pie. We thank you so much for supporting clickbait-free content here at I Dream of Indie. We can't possibly make it without you. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors that support this channel through channel memberships. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solarusi, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Nathan Moore, Skeptism, Mitchell Hall, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beef Arenis, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, Lord Metroid, Seacoil, and Larkison. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.